Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's virtual bridge session. Uh, today we have Tony Gibson, uh, who's a learning developer at RGU, who is going to um, present to us and talk to us about creating interactive PDF uh, marking feedback sheets. So I'll gladly pass on to Tony. Thank you, Andrew. Um, thanks to Kenji for um, shoehorning me into this session. <laughs> I like getting emails from, from Kenji, but when it starts off with, can I ask you a question? Or um, I need a favor, you kind of go, oh, okay. <laughs> so it made me try and think of, of what I could share with you guys. Um, one of the things that I, I do is, um, like most of you, you'll have an assessment criteria, which you mark your um, reports or any kind of uh, student submission with. Um, we have quite a, a large number of students in pharmacy and life sciences, which is where I work at RGU. Um, so rather than them having to do anything uh, manual, um, I was given the task to try and create something a little bit easier for them. So um, I created this interactive PDF. So I'm going to quickly share, well, share my presentation and then share my, sc well, share my screen and then my presentation. Yeah. Let's see if this works. And Tony, would you like us just to jump in with any questions we have, or do you want us to wait to the end? What would you prefer? Um, if you want, if you can wait, um, jump in when you want. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll be going through, there's a few, basically it's a small presentation, and then it's more of a, I'm going to show you um, what I, um, why is what's, um, show you, basically it's going to be kind of, I'm going to basically show you how I create. Uh, those of you that were here at the last session, um, Kenji mentioned I kind of like Bitmoji and I've been throwing it into bits and pieces to try and make that connection with our students because they seem to to uh, to know what Bitmoji is all about and so uh, you might find a couple popping up periodically. So what we have is um, interactive feedback sheets. So we start off with assessment criteria. Some of you will, this is kind of one version that we have which is um, goes between zero and a hundred. Some of our exams are at, are actually done out of 10 so that the criteria it changes into out of a percentage but one part of our one part of the school seems to work out of want to give things out of hundreds one other people want to do it out of, a, out of 10 so we kind of have to change it around so this is one version and then what we actually come with what we end up with is basically this interactive feedback sheet where you will have a drop down of all the student names and you can then just put your your marking in the little boxes which is out of 100 and the total mark happens at the top so you don't have to do a lot of calculation um, it kind of does it for you but obviously they'll be checking and then at the bottom you can add in additional comments which the students seem to like so from there um, so what do I normally use I use Adobe Acrobat Pro um, I have an Excel sheet which has my macro in it and then I just need a list of students so basically I'm ready. So I have the um, PDF document that I created and then I have my list of student names. As you can see, you know, I, I kind of am a bit of a child. So I, I like my Roger Rabbit, Disney, etc. Hence why my, my list of student names, because obviously I can't use real student names. So this is kind of the things that I normally get sent to me. I will get sent a Word document with the assessment, which is the assessment criteria in Word form. I then take the student names from um, the student list of the module and then I do my bit of wizardry to put them both together. So it's easier to show you what I do. So that's what I'm gonna do. And this is where it turns into a little bit of um, like repeater. So if we go to, so here is one I created earlier. So this is my feedback sheet that I've created um, in PDF if it actually opens. Come on, there we go. So can you all see this, yeah? Yes, thank you. Can you all? Yeah, perfect. So this is what I initially created from a Word document. And if you've got Adobe um, Pro, you can actually come down here and you can actually pair the form, which is where a lot of the, the wizardry is done. So each is just basically your section. So you set up a drop down box, you've got an, a name, um, an area for a name, 
and then the um, criteria of how it's created is, is put in the total mark box. These are just normal boxes that you just set to only take a number. I normally restrict it so they can't give more than 100. Um, and if it's out of 10, it doesn't go above 10. And then obviously at the bottom here, you can add in additional feedback. This box is also set up to allow more than the, the, the words that would fit in this box. It, um, what you do is you get a little wee plus sign down the bottom, which allows the student to expand it. It works really well for um, online so that the students don't have paper, um, but if they try and print it out, then obviously they'll just see the uh, what's in the box. So this is move this out of the way. So this is basically what the form is. And uh, when you have a drop down menu, at the moment there's nothing in it. Um, it's just set for ready ready for the um, macro to, to happen. So the next thing I do is I will then open up my spreadsheet, which has a nice JavaScript into it. So here um, it goes down as far as you need it. Um, the JavaScript has been put in into six different areas to allow it to take the information that I need. And then what I tend to do is I tend to copy and paste my uh, list of student names into here. So if I quickly go back and get that, I did it on my system to spend my life copying and pasting, to be honest. So I just kind of paste it into here. Uh, make sure it, so I can see it. And as you can see, with the coding that was already there, it, what it's basically doing is it's taking and creating a list of everything that I've typed in. So depending on how long this can go on down to 20, it can go, go down to 30. Then what I do is I move over to the JavaScript that was created and I come down to the second area, which is telling me how much of this array I need to copy. So because my list only comes down to eight, that's why I tell it, it only comes down to eight. And from here, I basically copy this JavaScript. See, I told you it was all about copying and pasting. And I go back to my PDF. In here, I am looking for the action wizard, which appears at the top. I come in to the, and add in a new action. Come down to more tools. I'm going to execute because that's what I want it to do. So I click on it, click on the plus, which moves it over to the action steps. Double click on the specify settings. And this is again where I paste in my JavaScript. And one thing to remember is always come and remove the comma at the bottom, because if you don't, then the JavaScript will throw up an error because it's looking for another item. Um, and then you click OK. I normally take the prompt off because I don't need it to come up and tell me that I need to click again and then it saves it. So um, the name, it then disappears. And if you look on the right hand side in the action list, you've got the action sitting there. So at the moment, there is nothing in the drop down list. But if I double click and click on start, then the next time I look by magic, the list is there. And from here, what I tend to do is I tend to then go and save it as a reader extended PDF with the tools, which allows it to fill in and, and save, etc. which means you then have a live version, which nobody can edit. I have some members of staff, I don't know about you, but I have some members of staff that like to go in and play and work out, think, and work how, out how things work, which I have no issue with. But when it's something that's for feedback and it's something for assessment, then it can sometimes, they sometimes send it back to me and go, I've, I've played with this and I don't know what I've done. And it's easier for me just to go back to the, um, the main, the, sorry, the, um, the template and, and make the changes so it comes back. So that's why I always save it as an extended version. And that's what I send to staff to be able to use. And then all they need to do is they can just come in and choose the student name, add in their name, the date that they're marking it, 
and then add in the, the marks for whatever the three section are and it gives me um, the, the percentage of the total mark and they can save it with a student name and then they save that as a flat PDF, which is what I normally ask the students, to, the staff to do is kind of save it as if they're gonna print it, which what it does is it flattens the PDF. So it means that the students can't make any edits to it. As we all know, students can be a bit ingenious at times and um, go in and want to make changes, especially if they think that they haven't been given the scores that they're expecting. Sorry, my screen's just gone black. Um, so then basically what we're left with is the final object, which is your list of students. You've then got your definitions down the side, which you can add code, add the, your, uh, your marks out of. It calculates it. Um, and that's basically a quick run through of how I do my feedback sheets. Thank you very much. Um, that was great. Um, open up to the, the floor for any questions. So may I ask one? Yeah. Hi, Tony. That was really good. Thank you so much. So what led you to use the PDF? Were you using them already? Were you comfortable with them or did you yeah. do some investigation of other tools? We, we, we did some investigation of other tools, um, but at the time we wanted something that um, was quick and easy for the staff to use. Um, as we all know, PDF is the easiest thing that opens up on any browser, any device. Um, it's quite accessible, you know, so it ticked all the right boxes. Um, staff were getting fed up of, of obviously, I mean, there's a lot of staff that, that like their paper and still like their paper. But in this age where we're trying to go more digital and even more so in the current situation where we need to make sure things are more digital for students so they can access it wherever, that we thought at least this way they're not waiting for you know, marks to come through email or come through the post or whatever to get an actual physical copy. So we, we did a little bit of testing um, and we thought that the Adobe was, well, it was quite resilient anyway. Um, I did a few tests and it worked really well. Um, I mean, I've actually moved on from this now that I actually can create individual spreadsheets because I've created an actually macro using Excel um, that actually basically opens up a PDF, inputs the name, um, you know, the name of the student name and then saves it anyway. So, so I have that. So I've moved on <laughs> just basically because staff were getting fed up. If you've got 130 students, then got to go through that process 130 times. Um, whereas this way, they're basically getting 130 documents that can find their student, open it and fill it in. Um, but I just thought this was, I, I kind of like people to get, to, to start at one step and then move on rather than going straight into, um, you know, the, the individual, because it depends on, on what people want. Um, but, you know, it's, I'm quite happy to share my practice if anybody wanted it or was interested in it. It's just, I kind of like to find an easy way to do things. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of my work is, is very much laborious and it's the same thing all the time. Um, and, and creating these, these PDFs take a bit, take me, to be honest, they take me about five minutes. What you saw me do is, is basically the length of time it takes me to do them now because I know what I'm doing. Um, I actually, one of my academics asked me to write out instructions and it ended up about 20 pages long with everything I do. And she went, okay, no, I think I'll leave you to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so we just thought PDF was, was the easiest. It opened up on everything. Um, the students seemed to like it. Um, and then just for security, we asked them to kind of use the the print the print pdf because it then flattens it and it means that students can't go in and change their marks although if they know what they're doing anybody can change anything anyway um but then that would be academic misconduct but <laughs> students tend to like to push themselves a little bit but yeah that was the long-winded answer for where we chose adobe that's brilliant thank you jason Anymore? Yeah, any plans to sort of roll out further and centralise it? Obviously, there'd be a step further of, well, um, creating this for every student in the university and do, uh, linking it in with, indeed, the student record system so that, uh, yes. uh, and so on, bells and whistles, perhaps. It, it, it is. I mean, it, it's something that um, I, <laughs> I, I'm quite, I don't tend to kind of like shout what I can do, as, as Kenji will be aware of. 
um, going by the last session, I, I'm quite, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm quite aware of my abilities, um, and I don't often shout what I can do and what I've created. Uh, we, I got a new line manager, and she's very much of, no, you need to showcase this, and I'm like, but surely people know how to do this. Um, but often I get told, well, actually, no, people have not thought about this, and yeah, I do because I'm, that's where my brain works. Um, so although I might think it's quite simple, a lot of people kind of go, actually, what you've just done is really, it takes a lot of work out of what we do. So the idea, so I have approached our, our central services, um, Andrew will know them, Delta, um, and I have mentioned to them, and they've not really said anything, whether it's too much work or whether they think I'm trying to take over, which is the normal thing, uh, <laughs> that, not that I'm trying to take over at all, but, um, but yeah, so the idea, initially would be that this could be rolled out across the schools because I think it could be picked up a lot of places and I think the student will well our students seem, seem to like it because they can go onto Moodle they can download it they've got it and then if they need to show it it's a document that they can reuse and, and, and move on it's quite a portable document so actually going back in my experience it does build on a whole load of things so i um, back many years ago that's uh, when i was having to be head of a, a department we moved because we were all, i was in charge of some big classes and the number of times i was writing the same old thing again on assessment scripts so we moved to a tick box uh, checklist yeah. for feedback but and i can see how this could take it further do you have any plans for actually developing it for, for myself one thing that, that, that appeals to me is uh, um is the, the feedback that goes to students is often quite complex and obviously the marking criteria there cover a whole load of situations but um, one thing that we know from good assessment practice is that students have a limited ability and capability to make change so get, letting them know the priority the thing that will make the biggest change to their mark improvement in their mark um, and I can see how that can be uh, almost automated in a way to, uh, as part of this uh, do you have any particular development plans well, the, the one that I showcased you is the one that we use that uses we use a little bit more in undergrad because it actually shows the assessment criteria and most students at really are just looking at their mark rather than anything else. Um, we use originally this was developed for postgrad because we have a lot of postgrad students and their feedback forms are slightly different where they still have the assessment criteria but we don't actually edit that. We actually have um, a document where it has it still has the criteria, it still has the number, um, you know, the mark out of 10, but then it has a feedback for each criteria. Um, and originally it was set up where it was just blank and staff would just go in and they would put in their individual comments for those students, which most grad students really liked. Um, we've developed it further last semester where now everybody had the same, was normally putting back the same amount of feedback, the same writing exactly the same thing for most of the students, especially around about the references. It was all more as a case of make sure you check your references, either choose between, you know, Vancouver or, um, you know, make, make sure that it, it's, it's, it's the same. So what we now do is the feedback sheet that goes out has pre-generated comments that is normally always there. And it means that the staff can just open it up and go, well, that doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, that does, that does. And then I'll add in my own bit um, and then every at the end of every semester, the module team will meet and they'll look at the assess, you know, look at the feedback sheets that come back and go right. What else can we add in um, that is normally always said? Because uh, a lot of the academics have been doing it for years and they tend to have like a, a word document with their normal comments. They just copy and paste it into the feedback sheets. Um, again, copy and paste seems to be around forever and it works wonderfully. But so yeah, so so we we were developing it all the time. I'm kind of going mm, that I could maybe and, and I'm always looking at something as soon as I get something working it's like how can I rejig this again how can I move this up again um, which is how I got on to creating the individual um, feedback sheets using of all things um, Excel and macros and JavaScript and yeah something quite easy but does a quite a laborious job and the staff seem to love it because then they don't have to resave the documents they just go in and look for their student um, and, and answer it and with postgrad we've normally got about 130 students so I tend to split it into either three or four so basically the markers are just getting their students so again it just makes it a little bit easier for them to, to mark just trying to make it trying to make it quicker and easier for them because obviously they're as busy as the rest of us um, and it's all quite time laborious but yeah I'm always always trying to make things slightly easier and better. 
James, did you have a question? Yeah, Tony, thanks so much for that. That was brilliant. Um, I think what you've done is incredible. I, I I know a bit of programming, but I've never really done any automation in terms of, like, I didn't know you could add JavaScript into PDF, for example. And so I'm thinking I would love to use that and I can see okay. how people would take your, what you've done on board. Is there, is, so the process you've gone through there where um, you paste it into Excel or you copy it from Excel, paste it in, and you have to remove the, the comma. So the that, comma. Yeah. <clears throat> Was, uh, were the staff, were they on board straight away? Was it quite simple, straightforward for them to follow this process? Well, the thing is, they, they don't, you guys are getting to see my process. Staff, academic staff don't normally see our process. We kind of get the start and then they get the end result because most um, most of my staff, if I start, Kent, you'll understand this, when you start explaining the technicalities, you just see them shut down. They don't want to know. They just want to give you a piece. They want to keep give you something and get what they want back. They don't really care how a little bit works. Um, so, so basically what happened was um, I, I saw it and I, and I was hearing, I was in module teams and I was hearing how people were, were getting frustrated about the feedback and having to spit and, you know, the students were, were kind of, why can't this be automated, etc. So again, everything's pushed by students. So I kind of took it and went, mm, I wonder how we can make this different, how I can get this to work. So I kind of added that to myself and started got it to work. And then all I did was I just sent it. I started off with Postgres because we're quite a small team. Um, got it sorted, sent it out to them. Um, basically, they opened it and went, wow, okay, let's use it. And I'm like, well, well no, I, I want to test. No, no, let's use it. We need to use it in anger. So basically, the next assignment that came in, they used it. Um, everybody then was coming up to me and going, oh, my God, this is so basically fine. It, it was, what was it we worked out that you're talking about three minutes of script? Um, and if you've got 150, so you're talking about rather than you taking a whole day to do marking, you're doing it in maybe two or three hours, um, which allowed them to do something else. Because um, you're probably like a lot of my academics, your time matrix is stupid. Um, so this kind of allowed them to do something else to be slotted in. Um, so yeah, so they, they don't tend to know how it's done. And a lot of them don't really care how it's done. I just get requests and go, this is my assessment criteria. Can you do your PDF thingy? Yeah, okay. <laughs> And then they just get the files and that's it. It just means every every year, every semester, I've got to redo it. But because I've got the tools, it takes me a couple of minutes. The only difference with the individual ones, it means I've got to move away from my computer while it's doing its generation of the individual sheets, which is why I'm at home now I have my computer and I have my laptop. So it means I get my computer to do it because it's got slightly more power and then I'm on my laptop doing something else. So yeah. Is there any way of um, developing it into some kind of app so you don't have to do that? You can just give it to the lecturers and they can do that themselves? It probably is, yeah. Uh, that that would be the ultimate, that you can just feed something in and get something out. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's finding the time to be able to develop that. Mm. But yeah, it's, it's, it's on my list um, of yeah. trying to make an app out of something that's automated. Excellent. Well, good work. Thanks for that. Kenji. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I, I, I like it. I, I didn't realize that you could put JavaScript into to PDFs. That's, that's a completely new thing. Kenji something. I, I oh, don't wow. know. <laughs> believe, believe me, I, I just, I've practiced this like unsurprised face. I actually learn things all the time, but I just, I've, over time, I've just like, tried to look a bit smarter than I actually am. Um, so <laughs> one of the interesting thing is that um, for me, so that process has come about because feedback sheets traditionally within a university setting, whether they're kind of cover sheets or, or feedback sheets, that's a process that you add on to an assignment and give back to students. So in, in pro probably in college contexts, if you have enough time to write out a considerable amount of feedback, that there's a move towards making that all digital and online. But your process is interesting because it does consider the potential for doing that offline. Because once you've got the PDF and once you've got the student assignments, essentially you don't need an internet connection. And, yeah. and although we, all the solutions that you see sort of coming forward tend to sort of assume that everybody has 
uh, an internet connection that's continuously reliable. And one of the things that we discovered during lockdown, that although students significantly had in internet and connectivity issues, there were a small group of lecturers that equally had <laughs> connectivity yeah. issues, especially living in some remote areas. So it's, it's interesting that your solution is essentially an offline solution. Um, that can yeah. work in, in, in a few sort of flexible ways. I was just interested in how about if I access the PDF on like a tablet? Um, can I, I can still fill it out, I'm, I'm assuming. Yep. Um, and yeah. stuff like that. And I've seen, yeah. I've seen people talk about things like um, OSCEs on the move, where mm -hmm. like if you have those kind of interactive feedback sheets and you have to go to a placement setting or a workplace setting and you, yeah. you cannot always be sure of connectivity in those sort of outdoor and outside of the off campus areas. It, it, it sounds as if you could adapt this to like a yeah. whole set of different use cases where it could work in really interesting ways. Um, it, it's it's given a lot of just ideas. Adobe Reader. Sorry, uh, sorry, yeah. Kenji. And um, you don't need fill in it in you don't need pro you just need adobe reader um which is why how which is the reason why i save it the way i do for extended which means it, it because ultimately all you're doing as reader is you're opening it you're dropping down you're filling in so so yes if you had the you know if you had the files on your tablet you could go anywhere and just fill it in and then when you come back to the internet connection it would just update upload or whatever um so yeah yeah, there's a lot of really interesting workflows potentially, and especially within college settings, some of our, you know, work-based advisors, some of the different contexts of where you need to do a kind of assessment routines, but not necessarily where you've got good connectivity. It, it's just, it's, it's a nice solution. It really is. Well done, Tony. I'm totally stealing Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> when I can, I'm going off to read like how to write JavaScript into PDFs now and then pretend I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's, because it's 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 you know it's it's something that's um that everybody would possibly use um i'm quite happy to share my knowledge okay. uh, i've been told my epr i'm supposed to think put, put, oh is it i was told i need to put myself out more than i do i tend to like go no i'm here i'm going to do my own stuff i don't because i don't think what i do sometimes is good enough or um and actually just listening to you all going, this is brilliant. I'm going, really? Okay. <laughs> are, are, are you up for sharing like the Excel sheet and um, stuff like that? that that's, that's awesome. That's brilliant. Okay. So we'll, we'll book you in for a few more um, uh, JavaScript uh, tutorials. And, uh... <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> I know, and Roger Rabbit, you see, M Mickey and Donald, they're just, they're, they're just so competitive. May, may I ask a question from someone who's not been a lecturer? Um, from a student perspective, what your students see from, from this report and from the, the PDS, is it different to what other students will see in other parts of the university? And is there a difference and do you get feedback from the students to say we prefer it this way or um how, how does that happen? There, there has there has been um i'm that there's, there's only about seven or eight online learning developers in rgu um we have our own group that periodically meets um used to meet a little bit more um but um it, it's kind of stopped for whatever reason but we're starting to pick it up again so we kind of do try and share practice um and what I sometimes get is at the meetings, if you've got students obviously speak to other students and especially if they're in the, if they're in halls or they're in flats together with somebody else, um, you'll get one of the other uh, developers coming up and going, what do you do for feedback? Well, we do various things, why? And it, it turns out that one of, you know, one of, sort of my students would have shown their feedback to their friend and gone, we get nothing like that. That would be so, and and, it, and that's as I said, students tend to get a lot of things done because they turn around and go, "I'm wanting it like this." Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's um, it's not been taken up by the entire, but there's one or two um, of my colleagues that have asked how I do it, and, um, and, and I think I've really adopted it. But the good thing is, it doesn't have to be how I mean that my process there 
could actually be anything. It doesn't have to be names. It could be, you could have any document. It's not just a feedback sheet. So, you know, you could actually, I, I was in, just in my head just now, I could see things that it could, it could work in an administrative point of view. Um, you know, if you had a list of names or a list of something to go into a document that's the same, it would basically work out the same. And, and do you actively go out and seek feedback from students or does it come through this group that you, you work with? Um, from, from the school students, um, I tend to get the feedback from the module team. So the, the staff, the different module teams will get feedback from their students and then they filter it back um, to us. Uh, unless I've, um, and that, you know, I mean, there's a lot of students I've maybe known for the four years that they've been there and they'll come up and go, you know, at the beginning, because we've used this for a couple of years now. So right at the beginning, there was a, quite a few of the students that were coming up and going, the feedback sheet we love, because the, the, the staff are quite, you know, they're quite forthcoming and turn around and go, well, you know, we didn't do this, Tony did it, which is kind of quite nice, because um, there is some members of staff that tend to make out that they created it rather than the team, but never. <laughs> and it's the way it should be. <laughs> it, it's, it's nice to get credit, and I think that's the one thing that's come out of the lockdown is that um, the school exec actually now kind of understand what we do because the exams and a lot of the stuff that needed to be done wouldn't have got done without us really um, and the staff are suddenly realizing actually it's hard to do our job because <laughs> they're having to do it themselves and they can't just come into our office and go Tony can you do this it's like I can't I'm nowhere near you you need to do this you need to follow these instructions so there's this kind of you know as, as I think you know Kenji and I were talking a couple of days ago it's it's nice to see that people are finally realizing that what we do is kind of hard it's not simple we, but we make it look simple so, Uns yeah. unsung heroes yeah yeah this is the first yeah. year I got uh, um, I got a, an award from that was actually came from the students it was it was love the star awards it's the first oh, year I've been, I've been at university for 13 years first year I've got a star award that basically has come from the students it was just I think I burst out in tears when I found out just because it actually makes you feel okay okay the Brilliant. students appreciate what we do which is the ultimate thing really yeah, so, yeah. And on that very light-hearted note, we're coming up to the half-hour point, so probably a good place for us to um, stop the recording. Um, but if everyone wants to stay on, we can continue the conversation beyond. So I'll, I'll do a quick pause for Kenji's editing purposes. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining this virtual session, and have a great weekend. Thank you.